Hello, my amazing grade five students. Today, we are going to start on the first part of a two-day project where we are going to explore value through paint. And we are going to specifically look at creating what's called a tint, which is adding white to a hue or the original color. Today, our goal is that we are going to be creating six different tints of a color. You will get a piece of paper that has six sections on it and a place for you to write your name, class, and number on the back. This is the first thing that you need to do. Please don't forget this before you begin. Next, our goal is that we are going to paint in one section the original hue or the color of paint that is in your flower palette originally from the paint bottle. We are then going to work our way up to adding a little bit more white each time until at the very end we are not going to actually use any more of our color we're just going to use our dirty in a way brush to create our final tint let's have a look at how we are going to actually be able to do this today you will have a paint palette a flower palette which will have your original color or hue and a bit of white this is the only paint that you're going to get today. You won't be served any further paint. So we need to be a little bit mindful as we're mixing today of our amounts of paint that we have in the different sections. So let's go ahead and start with our original blue color without any white inside. Now you're gonna be able to choose any color that you'd like, but we want to choose one that will mix well with white. So like yellow is a little bit difficult to do. Now, when we are painting, and we're especially painting along a straight line, I wanna give you a helpful tip of how to do that. When we are using our flat brush, we can either use the very edge of the brush to wiggle along that straight line, or we can use our brush like a thin brush by turning it on its top and side to get along that line. But either way, you want to wiggle the paint into the edge where the two lines of our border meet. Okay, I've finished my first square. It's okay to get a little bit of paint on your table because we'll use a wet rag later to wipe it off. Next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take and actually put a good amount of paint onto my paper. And we're going to use the paper to do some mixing. And I'm just going to do a quick little tap of white with my brush. Today, we're not actually going to use any water. We are just going to continue our painting uh, with a dry brush because we're not changing colors, really. We're just creating further value changes with our paint. So if you need a little bit more paint because you didn't put enough on your paper to cover, do the same exact idea. Put blue first and then a small tap of white Mix it on your paper and then spread it into the places on your square. With the next square, it's the same idea. Take a scoop of your hue and now do a little bit more of a tap of white. You actually don't need as much as you think you do before then mixing it on your paper and spreading it around your square. Again, at this point, square we're going to do about 50 50 so we're going to take the same amount of blue as we are going to take the white you want a good amount of paint and work quickly because when your paint is wet that's when it mixes if you're noticing that it's a little bit too close to the one above it take some more white and mix further before spreading it all out On this square, the second to last square, we're actually gonna start with our white. We're gonna take way more white than we are gonna take blue. So more white and then a small tap of blue. Kind of like how we did for this one, except with the white. That much and swirl it together and spread it out. Now for the final one, here's the trick. I don't want you to select any blue. I just want you to select white because your paintbrush already has some blue on it. So we want the lightest tint that we can while still having a small amount of blue on our brush. So take just white and because your brush is a little bit dirty, it will already have some blue to mix into it. 
Now let's talk about what we're gonna do when we are finished. When we are finished with our artwork, we're of course gonna put it on the drying rack. I hope that you've already written your name, class, and number on the back because all of our papers are gonna look a little bit similar except for the color that you've used. You'll know that, oh, I made mine with blue or I made mine with purple or pink. But besides that, we have our flower palette. What we're going to be doing is before we take our flower palette and brush to the toilet to wash in the toilet sinks, we are first gonna take face tissue and I want you to squeegee off as much of the paint from your brush and also wipe any extra paint out from the inside of the flower palette before then taking it to the sink in the toilet to wash out. When you bring back your palette, your palette and brush should be dry. They should not be dried using the hand dryer. Please use paper tissue that is in the toilets to wash them and dry them. When you bring them back, boys and girls, please put them in the location where you got them to begin with for the next class to use. All right, boys and girls, today remember your goal is to create a variation of value with our color from the original hue all the way down to the lightest tint of that color. All right, let's go ahead and get our supplies and you may get started.